since I'm a gastroenterologist, I've been in the position where I've been asked to put peg tubes or, or um, percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy feeding tubes in patients um, who have a terminal illness. Um, I believe today it's, it's generally accepted that they do not offer uh, much in a way of benefit to a patient unless perhaps they're in chemotherapy and responding to chemotherapy. It may be a short-term fix, but for patients in general with a terminal disease, PEG tubes only prolong their dying. They do not significantly make a patient better. Uh, they increase their secretions and the need for suctioning, perhaps the need for a Foley catheter because they urinate more. They're subjected to a minor surgical procedure with, with conscious sedation. And, um, and there's an expense related to them. Uh, and I tell f patients and families frequently when I've been asked to put in a PEG tube that it may prolong the dying to the point where the patient may be living and suffering for many, many months and the only thing keeping them alive is this external feeding tube. And then I would have to go back to the family or, and ask them, to remove the feeding tube um, if the patient truly was suffering and not getting better. And that's an equally painful discussion to have with the family because once a feeding tube is started, it's very difficult for them to uh, have it removed. Um, and I think of a family that would be visiting their loved one in a nursing home with a feeding tube in. They would go in day after day to see someone possibly unconscious lying in a bed curled up with a feeding tube, uh, with, which is the only link to uh, living. And uh, I myself would never want to be uh, in those circumstances, and I feel many people wouldn't either.